And good evening, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here in Delhi to open this panel on passing the G20 baton from Delhi to Rio. In his closing address to the G20 summit here in September, President Lula announced that the motto of Brazil's G20 presidency will be building a fair world and a sustainable planet. It's a motto that reflects the view of the current G20 president, Prime Minister Modi, that development and climate action are complementary pursuits. And that understanding is the foundation of the people positive energy transition that we are gathered here in Delhi to discuss. Renewables are now producing the cheapest energy in history. What that means, as Kenya's President Ruto told the inaugural Africa Climate Summit a few weeks ago in September, is that economic development isn't a trade-off with environmental stewardship. The two are no longer mutually exclusive, but positively reinforcing. The global transition from fossil fuels to renewables is already underway. Building a fair world and a sustainable planet will mean treating that transition as an opportunity. An opportunity to provide electricity not only to the 760 million people who live without any access to electricity, but for the first time in history to provide reliable energy to the 3.6 billion people who live in energy poverty, which means, which means those who don't have affordable access to electricity. As G20 president, Prime Minister Modi has championed the necessity of the energy transition as a vehicle of global equity. And India has led the world by example. Eight years on from the Paris Agreement at COP21, India has already surpassed some, surpassed some of its ambitious renewable energy targets, nine years ahead of schedule. And renewable electricity is growing faster here than in any other emerging economy. At the same time, India has maintained one of the fastest rates of economic growth on earth. This is what a people positive energy transition looks like. It's the scaling and strengthening of electricity grids it's the unlocking and directing of climate finance, including private sector capital. It's the creation of sustainable jobs and new businesses. And most important of all, it's the clear direction and enabling policies set by government. It's a transition which brings everybody together to work towards the same goal. The pace at which India is scaling deployment of renewable energy can teach us something important that one of the greatest barriers to a global energy transition is a lack of coordination. And this is especially acute in the global south. These are countries with some of the most abundant renewable energy resources on earth, but efficient green technologies are not in place to capitalize on them and to provide cheap electricity to their young and fast growing populations. And that's in large part because we do not yet have strong coordination between governments, businesses, civil society, and philanthropy. So infrastructure is not being developed into joined up systems. Enabling policies are not in place to unlock private sector investment. And the right type of capital is not flowing to the places where it is most needed. So what is the solution? we need to improve our coordinated approach. Achieving that will require us all to forge new models of cooperation and business not as usual, across borders, across sectors, across institutions, which is precisely what we at GAP exist to do with urgency. We launched two years ago at the Glasgow COP with the sole focus to putting this approach into practice in the global south, to get renewable energy working and scaling faster. We assemble alliances of partners from government to philanthropies to the private and public sectors. And these alliances take a comprehensive systemic approach 
to designing financially viable renewable energy systems. And they align their expertise and their funding to build them. So for example, one place where this new way of working is already underway in Africa is the Democratic Republic of Congo, where 80% of the population live with no access to electricity. That is 85 million people without any electricity. In February of this year, GAP and USAID brought 20 leaders together from different organizations to create a common roadmap for national electrification, which we presented then to the government in July. This coordination is now helping to accelerate the rollout of solar grids across the DRC. As we speak, sites with the capacity to serve over 120,000 people are under construction. And by 2040, GAP and this alliance of partners aim to provide affordable electricity access for over 20 million people in the country, enabling new businesses, job opportunities, and spurring economic development. It's a people-positive energy transition for the Democratic Republic of Congo. So in summary, India has been showing us that 2023 can be a renewable energy tipping point. We now have the technology, we, ha we now have the capital, and we must ensure the continued political will to provide everybody on earth with clean and affordable electricity. And so the challenge before all of us, ladies and gentlemen, is how we can bring this together into a self-sustaining system which will take international cooperation onto a new scale. We at GAP are excited to see Brazil's G20 vision of building a fair world and a sustainable planet. And we look forward to seeing renewable energy at the center, just as it has guided India's G20 vision of one earth, one family, one future. Thank you. <laughs>